This episode contains content that may be disturbing. Episode 1. I'm Still Alive. When you've been in the game for this long, uh, when you've had a successful career for almost two decades, usually the question people ask you is, like, how did you, how did you make it? Like, what was the formula? Um, like, do you remember when you first made it? How did it feel? Like, did you have these ambitions growing up? Strangely enough, the question I get the most from other people is, dude, how did you survive that? Like, how did you not let it crush you? How are you still alive? And that's what I'm trying to get at. Like, there is a very public event that happened in my life. Um that some of you will be familiar with, where I had to deal with a great misfortune in real time in front of millions of eyes. And I think the only reason I was able to survive it is because I had spent a lifetime dealing with various different misfortunes and learning to deal with overwhelming emotions. I don't want to make myself sound like super old or anything. I would say I'm still young, but I've lived quite a bit of life. So it's extremely difficult for me to try to capture like an entire lifetime uh, into any words. But my life, like anyone's life, like your life, is made up of memories. Unfortunately for me, the first memory I have as a kid is being completely alone. My father was working in construction and his work took him overseas. So I rarely got to see him. And my mom is a hairstylist, so She had to go to work very early, every day. I would wake up and she'd be gone. Those are my first memories that come to mind. And then eventually I went to a boarding school in Canada. And this was when I was like 13. I was actually the only member of my family in the country. Uh, My brother and my sister, they were off in college in the States. My mom and dad had returned to Korea And the boarding school I was at was exactly what you would imagine a very lonely and uh, heartbreaking place to look like. And because I was the only one in Canada from my family, the memories I have are like me standing alone in the courtyard during a weekend where all the kids had returned home. So like Thanksgiving, Christmas... Uh, There was also a housemaster that was super racist and would always find some way to make me feel like I'm not worth anything. Always singling me out, always picking on me. It was not that great. I think I gravitated towards things that would make me feel less alone. And at the time, uh, books. I read a lot. You know, I I learned to find characters that I identified with. I became a huge fan of music, um, movies, anything that would make me feel like I'm not alone. And I think as a result, I, I learned to understand human emotions really well. And despite all the things that I do, from music to writing, dabbling in acting, the only skill I actually have is recognizing an emotion in someone. When someone is sad, uh, when someone is broken, when someone is alone. 
For me, it's like looking into a mirror, honestly. Fast forward a few years, a memory that comes to mind is freshman year in college, summer break. One of my best friends from high school, um, he had a brain tumor and was in the hospital. And I wanted to obviously be there. Uh, but being a student and not having that much money, I had to take a series of transferring flights to get there. And when I arrived, um, I had arrived a little too late. So I got to the hospital and I was only able to see his corpse. Um, that was my first up close experience with death. Uh, and also regret for not having been able to speak to him for the last time and also just not being there for him. Again, skip forward. I am now a musician in Korea, a successful one at that, feeling like nothing could go wrong. Uh, met the love of my life. And we had a beautiful baby, and I felt like finally I had achieved happiness. But the day that she was born, um, I was at the hospital. I went on Twitter to announce to my followers that my daughter is in the world now, and I was very happy. But the responses were completely unexpected. Instead of, congratulations, oh my god, like she must be beautiful, I got replies, just people calling me a fraud, some wishing death upon me. And I thought that was really weird. Uh, that was really weird. But apparently, this strange witch hunt. Oh my God, this is really hard for me to describe this event. I don't know. These are just things hard, that are hard for me to talk about. Like, it's just really complicated. You know, I'm supposed to uh, make people understand something that, like, even people don't understand now. Like, they don't understand how this event happened. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Okay, okay. Apparently, something had been brewing online. And I was about to become the center of the biggest witch hunt in the history of Korea. This was 2010, and a large group of people online had come up with a very complicated and complex theory um, describing how I had doctored my entire life, that I was a fraud, that I had never gone to the college I went to, and that my entire family was a fraud. What started online quickly grew into um, something that came offline. There were protests in the streets, believe it or not. Um, people pretending to be with the government coming to my mom's hair salon. She obviously had to shut it down. My brother lost his job immediately. And for the next two and a half years, I had to fight every single day in real time, all televised on the news to prove that I am who I am. As a result of this witch hunt, I lost things that are irreplaceable. My family lost jobs. I lost my job for a while. And my dad, who had overcome cancer, um, fell ill again as a result. And 
and passed away during this. I remember the last night that I saw my dad, and it was in the emergency room. Um, I was in the waiting room, and on TV, the people that had taken part in this, um, some of these people uh, were going to jail. And that was supposed to be a moment of closure for me, but my dad was in a bed, you know, passing away. So pretty (laughs) depressing, huh? These are some of the defining moments of my life, like the defining memories that come to mind when I close my eyes and try to um, build the picture, the highlight reel of my life. And unfortunately, my defining moments are moments where I wanted to die. I did not want to wake up the next day. I did not want to be alive. But These dark moments, these heavy moments, don't do justice to the beautiful memories I also have. The brilliant, you know, memories that are so beautiful that they make me cry for a different reason, for a good reason. And interestingly, the most beautiful memories I have also come from these horrible memories that I just mentioned. Uh, For example, like, childhood, back to when my dad was off in some other country and I, you know, I, I had to grow up without him. Like the mo the happiest moments I had was when he would return from these work trips. Uh, and he always brought a gift and he bought me this tiny, like music box. And, um, I remember like, you know, winding it up and playing it and, I don't know if that's the first time I fell in love with music or sound, but I, I can't forget about that moment. Like I, I, that moment is just with me. Also, when my friend passed away, um, for the first time after high school, most of my high school friends had gathered and it was in Boston, um, that night. We all stayed over at my friend's house because uh, he was living with his mom and his mom would have to be alone that night. And we all decided that we would stay there and, you know, be with her. So all of us gathered in the living room and, you know, we just had sleeping bags and stuff and all of us were together. And that night we actually, uh, like when his mom Uh, fell asleep, we took the keys to our car and all of us in our PJs just crammed into the car and like went for a drive. I know this is not the thing to do, not the right thing to do, but it was our way of dealing with it as well. And uh, we actually got pulled over by the police and we had to go to the police station. And uh, my, my friend's mom she can't, She had to come to the police station. What a horrible day, right? Her son just passed away and she has to go to the police station to, <laughs> to get her son's friends out because they basically stole her car. And we felt so bad and we were 100% sure she would be super mad. But um, instead she just, she took us to a diner. She like, she was just happy that we were there. And for some reason that night was just one of the most beautiful moments of my life. And also with this, um, this whole Stanford scandal, this witch hunt that happened to me, uh, obviously that, that entire period of time was difficult for me. And it was, it was more difficult because like I said, uh, I had just had a baby, you know, my, my wife and I, it was the first time we were being parents and, um, anybody that's a parent knows that the first couple of years are the hardest, right? You need to constantly be there for your baby. 
And though I was home because I was now not able to work and I was also not able to go outside, honestly. Um, if I would go to a restaurant or if I would walk around in the streets, literally people would come up and say horrible things to me. Uh, so it was just not safe for us to be out. So even though I was at home for the first couple years of my, my baby's life, um, I was not mentally there. So obviously my wife was having a very, very hard time basically just raising our kid on her own, even though I was there. And um, I remember I tried my best not to show emotion at home because I, I felt like if I let myself shed like one tear, uh, I would just completely destroy myself or I would completely crumble. And I also didn't want to, you know, burden my wife or show my wife that I was weak. And I was weak. And this one time, my wife and I were eating dinner together at home. And I had dazed off. And my mind was somewhere really bad, uh, even though I was sitting right there. And I guess my wife recognized that. And she uh, actually slammed the spoon down. And she was like, if you're hurting, just I want you to cry. Like, I, it's, I want you to know that it's okay to cry. Like, she actually wanted me to cry. And just hearing that made me bawl my eyes out. But I remember it, it was so liberating. And I was so thankful that I had met someone that was this strong, that could be strong enough for the both of us. This is something that I love about her that, seriously dwarfs everything else like it just nothing else really matters and throughout that entire experience though I had lost so much I was able to learn how much I had gained too you know I, I was able to know that I met the right person for me and also you know able to fight something together like when does life offer you the chance to really do that to, to fight for survival together. So yeah, like, ironically, if I think about it, all of my best memories, all of my most beautiful memories, all the memories that I would actually fit into a highlight reel come from my worst memories. And I think it's because I didn't let those moments, those dark moments, uh, become my last moment. And I know that there are still like countless dark moments waiting for me ahead. But I also know that I'm going to rack up a ton of beautiful memories as well. And some of those moments are going to come out of these dark moments. And for that reason alone, I need to stay alive. That is why to this day, I am still alive. I know that many of you that are listening right now are also going through something just incredibly bad. Um, something that, uh, that paralyzes you, that makes you not want to be alive. And I'm not trying to say that, uh, that it's easy, but I want you to know that you need to wake up tomorrow because some great moments are waiting for you right around the bend, right on the next page, right in the next scene. But this requires you to be here for it, for you to wake up tomorrow. You need to see it. We need to see it. We all deserve to see it. This is my mindset. Too many days in the darkness Without a glimpse of the light Running tired and broken and scared But I swear I'll never give up the fight I see you broken and beat Head pulled down over your eyes Every part of you wants to surrender Darling, you were meant to surrender 
survive with every star.